Cinderella and we left off with a little voice that Cinderella heard it said would you rather dance with the prince I wonder who said that I have no idea but I'm so excited that we are going to read chapter 2 because we can find out who actually was talking to Cinderella so a brief recap on chapter 1 of Cinderella Remember, her father died and her stepmother and stepsisters were so mean to her. She was doing everything for them and she was never able to do anything for herself. So, one day she went to the market and remember what she read? She read that Prince Alex was going to have a royal ball and she was so excited because she was wanting to go along with her sisters and stepmother. But when she got home, they said, no, you can't go Cinderella. And they laughed at her and made fun of her and then her stepmother asked her not to dwaddle next time, blah, 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 blah. Remember, she was really mean to her. And Cinderella, she was so sad. And she went to start cleaning up as they left for the ball. And she heard a little voice asking her would she rather dance with the prince. I am so excited because that is where we're going to pick up part two of Cinderella. So sit back and relax as we read part two of Cinderella. Cinderella went to the kitchen and sank down on a bench by the fireplace. Well, she said sadly to the broom she was holding, I don't guess you would care to dance with a rag tag like me, would you? Wouldn't you prefer to dance with a prince? Said a tinkly little voice as a soft glow filled the room. And Cinderella looked up to see a tiny little fairy with a sparkly wand. Oh, who are you? She asked in a surprised voice. I am your fairy godmother. My dear, and I'm here to see that you go to that ball. But just look at me and, oh, no, 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 buts, twittered the little fairy. Now we must go out into the garden and gather a few things, and you can bring that pumpkin by the fireplace. Put the pumpkin on the ground, said the fairy godmother. And by that rock, you will find two mice, by the well, two lizards, and under that mushroom, a frog. Bring them. Cinderella did as she was told. Then the fairy pointed her magic wand and said, Crockle shells and macaronis, you two mice will turn to ponies. Golden fruit, I tap you thumpkin. Be a carriage, not a pumpkin. With a spell of ancient wizards, I make two footmen out of lizards. And one more change, my polywog, to a coachman from a frog. And with a snap, crackle, pop, and the twinkle of stardust, there stood a most magnificent carriage, two prancing ponies, a coachman, and two splendid footmen. Cinderella was delighted and speechless. And now, my dear, said the fairy godmother, let us see if I have enough sparkle left to create a ball gown. Close your eyes, she said, 
Then she pointed her wand at Cinderella and sang, Bring us stars from far places and brilliant jewels and fancy laces and make of these a new creation, a dress to be a great sensation. And then for such a pretty lass, we need some slippers made of glass. <laughs> there was a twinkle of light and a tinkle of magical music. And Cinderella opened her eyes, wearing the most beautiful glittering ball gown. Oh, it is all too marvelous, said Cinderella. How can I ever thank you? By remembering, my dear, she said, that the magic wears off at midnight. You must leave before the clock tolls twelve. Now into the carriage and off you go, said the fairy. And do remember, she said, I will watch the clock, <laughs> laughed Cinderella. And the magic carriage raced off into the night. When they reached the castle, it was aglow with many lights, and from within came the strains of beautiful music. When Cinderella reached the front steps, she was ushered by the dazzled royal doorman to the ballroom. She paused at the curtain entrance, and a hush spread over the room as all eyes turned to look at her. Prince Alex had until this moment refused to dance, but at his first sight of Cinderella, he moved across the floor as if in a trance. As he took her hand and led her into the ballroom, the royal orchestra began a stately waltz. From that moment on, he had eyes for no other. The whispers and gossip raced around the great hall. She is a princess in disguise. She is the daughter of a wealthy merchant. She is a queen from Persia. But no one, not even her stepmother and stepsisters, recognized the dazzling guest as Cinderella. And as they danced the night away together, they felt the magic of love. The time passed swiftly, and then the village clock began to strike the hour of midnight. Without a word or glance back, Cinderella left the prince and ran quickly out of the castle and down the stairs. The puzzled prince gave chase and called after her. Wait! I don't even know your name! Just then she lost one of the glass slippers, but still she ran. The prince paused to pick up the slipper, and when he looked again, the beautiful girl was nowhere in sight. But had he looked more closely, at the bottom of the palace steps, there was a ragged serving maid, a shattered pumpkin, two mice, two lizards, and a frog. The magic was over. Cinderella gathered up the little animals in her apron and trudged home. The next day, the kingdom was in a turmoil. The king issued a royal proclamation that Prince Andrew would marry the young lady whose foot could fit the glass slipper. And the prince himself went from house to house, searching for the mysterious owner of the lost shoe. When he came to Cinderella's house, the stepsisters tried desperately to squeeze their clawed hopper feet into the delicate slipper, but neither could manage more than a few toes. Cinderella came down the stairs and said, let me try it, please. And of course, the slipper fit perfectly. Then, as everyone stood around open-mouthed, the fairy godmother swooped down the chimney and into the room. Well, let us see now, she said in her tinkly little voice. If I can do that trick again, 
And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella was once more transformed into a dazzling vision. The stepmother screeched and swooned, and Drusilla and Priscilla were left speechless. Then the prince and Cinderella left in his carriage and lived happily ever after. The end. Cinderella. I'm so excited for Cinderella. Now we know who the small voice was. It was her fairy godmother who was watching over her. I love the beautiful carriage. And did you see how she turned the frogs and the mouse and the lizards into coachmen and servers for Cinderella? I love the ball too. They didn't even know who Cinderella was. She looked so beautiful. She was humble this entire time, stayed nice, and followed the golden rule, which is treating others how you would like to be treated. <sighs> I love that story. We are going to have another chapter readings very soon, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss our next chapter readings on Kyra's Corner. Sit back and relax for our next time and tune in. Subscribe, like, and share. Talk with you all soon. Bye.